Lockie Fogarty. Um, this could be a quick one in regards to a report card. Um, not being disrespectful at all to, to Lockie Fogarty, but um, yeah, I mean, didn't play a lot of football this year and what's his future over the next month or so? We're just going to have to wait and see. feel like he's a, a bit of a list clogger, certainly a depth player. Um, will he be at Carlton in 2023? Still just 23 years of age, now played 43 games across five seasons. 23 of those were with the Geelong Football Club. Um, just the three games this year with us. That's 20 games in two seasons. 17 in his first year. Um, I reckon the first half of last year was promising. Um, you know, he played some relatively good football under David T. But there were a lot more opportunities, particularly in the position that he plays. Um, and this year we've obviously blooded some younger players, and he's still young, uh, but we talk, you know, like Motlop and Durden and stuff. So yeah, he's been he's been somewhat pushed out in that regards. Twelve VFL games, um, didn't play the two finals in the VFL, and I'm pretty sure he didn't play that last game against Collingwood at the MCG, the curtain raiser um, to our senior game. So obviously, obviously some type of injury uh, to Fogarty. Career game span now across those five seasons, 15, 2, 6, 17 and 3. He's a high half forward who can go into the midfield. Um, probably more a pressure type forward. And he brings that to the table. Out of contract. I get this feeling you know, given the delistings we've had so far, and, and maybe there's going to be more to come, um, unless there's some interest from other clubs in, in Lockie Fogarty, I feel like he may be delisted, um, but could get another chance on the rookie list. That's that's the feeling I get. Draft, that 2017 draft, pick 22. Um, the Cats picked him up from the Western Jets. And then we traded for him in 2020 and we gave up picks 30 and 57 in return for Geelong's pick 38 and Fogarty. Season snapshot, overlooked in round one, first game of the season against the Tigers. Played round two against the Bulldogs um, when Jack Martin went out with COVID. Omitted for round three um, against the Hawks when Jack Martin came back in, returned for round four against the Gold Coast, replaced Corey Durden, who had cut COVID. So you can see that consistency of, well, he's been overlooked in that position. Um, then once again, omitted in round five when Durden returned. Went back, played VFL for a period of time, came back in for the round 14 clash against Richmond, but was made the medical sub, didn't get a run, um, omitted for the game against Fremantle, back to the VFL for a period of time, then injured late in the season. Um, I did try and look up what the hell was wrong with him. Um, he did have a back-related injury at some stage this year, but I'm not quite sure whether it was that, in fact, that kept him out um, in the final games in the VFL. From a statistical point of view, um, only played the two games, and he was relatively quiet in both. Round two against the Bulldogs, 14 disposals, two tackles, no goals. And in that round four clash against the Gold Coast Suns, only 10 disposals and three tackles. Didn't hit the scoreboard in both games. At VFL level, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a pretty good VFL player. 12 games, averages 24 disposals, averages six tackles. Um, his best disposal hall, and he probably played more midfield time. I think he was used throughout the midfield in the VFL. He had 31 against Footscray. Um, that was his best. And he is a good tackler at VFL level in particular. Um, he had two games where he had 10 plus tackles, including 14 against uh, the Casey Scorpions. That's that's big, that's big numbers in regards to tackles in round 21, uh, which happened to be his last game this season. Uh, just doesn't hit the scoreboard. Um, even at VFL level, 
and kicked two goals and six behinds, which is which is relatively poor in the position that he plays. Uh, what he brings to the table in regards to strengths, I reckon he's pretty tenacious, pretty hard at it, um, has a real dip. He's tackling, you know, he's tackling is good, loves to hit, um, loves the contest. He's got some genuine speed and explosiveness. Um, weaknesses, look, I, I, I just think he's, for the position he plays, which is forward, um, he hasn't got good finishing skills, either by foot, not too bad by hand, but he's not a good finisher, not a great kick. Don't think he has a great nous in regards to, you know, kicking a goal. And, you know, you look at his, look at his numbers in that regard. Um, and he lacks versatility, really. Can you play him on a wing? Can he spend huge chunks of time in the midfield? You know, I just think he lacks, he lacks a bit of, uh, I don't know, a little bit of versatility in regards to where he can play on the ground. He's pretty much been pigeonholed into that pressure forward. And also injuries as well. You know, he had a lot of injuries at the Cats and he's had some injury concerns while he's been at Princess Park as well. Um, one word for Lockie Fogarty. I went with limited. Um, there's two parts to this, limited as in opportunities. I think he's now behind the likes of Owies, Motlop, Martin, Fisher and Durden. Um, he's really been pushed back in the pecking order. Um, and he's not going to break into that midfield at all, uh, given his skill set. And limited as in talent at the highest level. I mean, I think he's, I think he's a very good VFL footballer. Uh, but it hasn't necessarily translated into um, taking that next step. Um, and that was probably showcased. And he, he was, he is young. Um, and that was probably showcased in his time at Geelong as well. I, uh, it, it's funny how it's worked out because I suppose they're mates. Uh, they play junior football together at uh, the Spotswood Football Club and the WRFL, exactly the same age and the same would have played in the same teams throughout their junior years at Spotswood, um, you know, and, and uh, Lockie Fogarty was highly rated, um, played Vic Metro, came through the Western Jets program, you know, first round draft pick, compared to Jordan Boyd, who I'm pretty sure was even look, overlooked to play uh, NAB League or TOC Cup, um, had to come through the hard way. Um, you know, and, and come through the VFL system to get his opportunity in the mid-season draft. And now, now, both 23 years of age and Jordan Boyd signs a two-year contract with the football club and um, Fogarty's future, yeah, well, it, it doesn't look too good for, for Fogarty. So isn't it amazing how it works out for, for both boys? I've given him a two out of ten. Um, you know, I can't give him any, anything more than that. What do you think on the future? of Lockheed Fogarty.